You boys look like a weird heavy metal band. <laughs> yes, we are a band. Really? Yeah. So what do you play? Symphonic, post-apocalyptic, reindeer grinding, Christ abusing, extreme war, pagan, fennoscandic metal. Right. Really interesting. <laughs> What up, everyone? DJ Anubis. And DJ Nico. Here with you on the Metal Time Radio podcast, doing another trailer reaction, this time for 2024's Roadhouse. Now, uh, yeah, see, this one over it. here, I, I, I love Roadhouse, obviously, the original with Swayze, but she really loves Roadhouse. Like, she really loves it. It was, like, one of my favorite movies growing up. I'm never going to see this. So... I'll check it out. I'll do the review and check I, it out. But uh, just like the new Nightmare on Elm Street, I never saw it because Nightmare on Elm Street. I think was I a watched big ten minutes of that, and it was growing like, up. Nope, not doing it for me. Like this Roadhouse, I don't know how many times I watched it on repeat. Like initially, I thought they were going to do a Roadhouse with um, who's the UFC female fighter, Ronda Rousey. Yeah, but it, I don't think that ever came to fruition. Nah. Um. I almost respect that more than this. <laughs> well, this is a little bit interesting once I get into the plot. Like, they did change that up a little bit, at least from what I can tell. But, um, is his name Dalton? I don't know. Um, it doesn't really say, but well, we'll basically, it's directed by Doug Lemon. Uh, cast course is Jack Gyllenhaal, Danielio Melicor, and Conor McGregor, who is actually a UFC fighter. Uh, ex UFC fighter. And the plot is an ex UFC middleweight fighter ends up working at the Rowdy Bar in the Florida Keys where things are not as they seem. So it doesn't sound like he's initially the cooler like Swayze was. Like it's not his job. So he was an ex UFC guy who ends up becoming a. Uh, 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 then why call it Roadhouse? Call it something different. But uh, I did find some things interesting. Um, Daniela Malacor, I didn't really recognize her name, but she was in a movie I saw recently called Assassin Club. Uh, but she's also been in Guardians and Fast Five and the Suicide uh, uh, the, Squad. Yeah, Suicide Squad, excuse me. Um, they also have Jake, of course, was in Donnie Darko. Uh, we, you know, movie we really like a lot, which is really weird. But ironically enough, or coincidentally, Patrick Swayze was in that movie. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of like this uh, connection there with that. Uh, and then there's Welcome uh, D. Alameda, who you won't really recognize the name unless you've loved movies like Desperado, which I do. He played Bucho in that. And so, like, he's going to be in this. So there's some familiar names in here that we're seeing. But, uh, you know, like her, you know, I'm kind of hesitant about uh, reboots and remakes. Most of them do not really pay pay off. Um, so I always get nervous whenever I see them pop up. Uh, Even when they're doing remakes of like, I'll give you an example, like show movies like Footloose, like Footloose then turned into a Broadway musical, right? Same thing with nine to five. Like these were big movies back in the eighties. Well, then they were so big that they put them on Broadway. Well, now what they're trying to do is take the Broadway show and put it back on TV. And it just, you, it's really hard to take a Broadway musical and put it on a movie. Right. And then try to get the same kind of like feeling because the Broadway musical and movies like Grease was a Broadway musical before it was a movie. Grease is very, very old. And the movie is different from the musical. A lot of the songs that are in the movie are way different than what's in the musical. And they, that's kind of what happened with Footloose and and nine to nine to five and uh, there's a couple of them like they even made a Mean Girls musical and they're rebooting Mean Girls but it's going to be the musical version of Mean Girls. It just never, it never feels the same as the movie and you never get the real feeling. Like I love Chicago. Chicago is a musical and it's only been a musical and. It's way different seeing it live versus the movie, even though I, I still appreciate the movie. 
Yeah, so let's let's give it a whirl and see uh, if this is going to be anything that's going to blow our minds. Because I have heard some people say it's the, the trailer is pretty decent, but we have to judge for ourselves. Before we start, do you have insurance? What? Your coverage good? Like, you have dental? Oh, haha. -ha. Is there a hospital nearby? Is it, like, too far? It's about, like, 25 minutes, I'd say. Uh, I just slapped you. Are you all right? What? <laughs> So you like to fight. You ever win? No one ever wins a fight. This ain't the holiday in, pal. I, I'm, I'm moving. A friend of mine suggested I come talk to you. I own a roadhouse out in the Florida Keys. Lately, it's been attracting the wrong clientele. Oh, look, they have a cruiser around the van. Judging by your car, you need that. Well, I like my car. Think about it. Come on, bro. I know who you are. Elwood Dalton. Big fan, man. Uh -huh. That guy's got a knife under his shirt. You just take a big step back and pop me in the face. You can do it. Tell me about this fountain. Yeah, it's all nice, like he's Mr. Rogers or something, but then he'll haul off. <laughs> ah! Really interesting guy, overall. Brand wants to take the roadhouse away from me. He wants to build some resort. I should warn you, people have a certain way of getting things done around here. Hey, fellas. Looks like you're having a smirky night. Oh, I got a tip for you. Don't let no one get this close. Come on, bro. Let me guess. You're gonna threaten me? Tell me to get out of town. I get the impression that you can't be threatened. Once Knox is on the job, it's over, baby. It takes a lot to get me angry, but when I am, I just can't let go. People seem a little aggressive around here. Is that one in front of yours? No, I just broke his arm. Yeah, you know, I don't know. Like, here's the thing. Why call it Roadhouse? It's not so much that. Uh, but just thinking about, like, Swayze just had flair. Like no, no offense to Jake, but Swayze. Swayze was, was Swayze. very calm and just cool and collected. And like it did, like I don't know. It seems like they're almost making a mockery of this film in a sense. Like they're trying to make it more comedic than it really needs to be. Like the thing about Swayze, like he can insert a comedic moment without it really turning into uh just a goof like it, it just it, it, the, like even think about and uh, sam really, elliott's character like, yeah jake gyllenhaal as this badass I, I i don't buy it jake gyllenhaal's the weirdo he was in nightcrawler he right. was in but she was very good in, you know um i i don't know no connor I, you know he still seemed a little goofy as i know like i know what character he's playing mm -hmm. but he looks like probably the most interesting of all of them but he, even his character seems to be a bit like. So is Jake Gyllenhaal going to do the throat punch rip out? Uh, <laughs> right. It, like, at the is end, is there any like dark story in his past? Or I mean, <sighs> yeah, it's it's going to be tough, man. Like I'm it, not going to watch it. At I, all. I, I'll watch it just to say that I did. I think it's coming on Netflix or Prime or whatever. So you can watch it without me. But uh, I can tell you right now, like it just, I don't know, man. Like I'm not. <laughs> I'm not opposed to reboots. I never have been like you and I. We love the Evil Dead from 2013. Mm -hmm. Excellent job. I mean, like some movies <coughs> that we don't realize are actual reboots or reboots. Departed. Yeah, like it, the Departed's kind of a reboot. Um, well, even like the Italian Job, mm -hmm. like that. Like I saw the original Italian Job. It's not that good. Like the the remake with Wahlberg and then the thing. The thing. Yeah, I mean, reboots are not the end of the world, but like. I don't know. It's hard for me when it's 
I, I know it's Roadhouse. A lot of people are like, Roadhouse, you're really pissed off about Roadhouse. Well, yes. Yes, I am. Yeah. I, mean, I, I got to watch Patrick Sweezy when I was nine years old, sitting on a roof naked, all right? And running into the water naked with a dick swinging left and right. That was the first penis I ever saw. So Roadhouse has got me right here. So if you, if you don't get to see Jake's penis, it's no good. I don't want to see Jake's penis. <laughs> I'm sorry. Yeah, it's just uh, there's like a certain vibe. Like, I don't know. It's hard for some of these modern directors to capture. It's like they're trying too hard. Yeah. It think really about is. it for a minute if you're trying to redo Commando. That's source negative. Like, it's almost impossible to be you done. You can't do it. You can't. And even if you found someone who could, like, so let's say you took Brock Lesnar, right? And try to do that. Like, he doesn't have arnie's charisma or and same with patrick like there's the, the charisma is not there it's something with patrick swayze and um we were watching i mean this, even this the villain really... in this the, the lead guy that's the villain doesn't even compare it to the guy that was in the original because like, um, yeah just... he was like this rich old fuck yeah and for me like with patrick swayze we were watching we've watched many docs about him and the one that really got us was the it was about two years ago i think um, it, it was really, really good, but it had a lot of people who worked with him in the past. And the, the thing that really struck me the most was Rob Lowe was talking about Patrick Swayze getting the role in Tu Wong Fu as the, you know, the um, chick. Yeah. Oh, God. What was her name? Vita, Miss Vita. And Rob really wanted that role. And he said, I'm the one that they always say is way too feminine. How did I not get this role? And he's like, but it's something about as soon as well, Patrick a put lot. on that outfit, he became that character. He started walking and he had that flair. He had that because he was he was a professionally trained dancer, not only an actor, but a professionally trained dancer. So he was able to kind of just feel his way into being this drag queen. and. Rob was like pissed off at first when he didn't get it, but he said, When I saw how they did it and how Patrick did it, he deserved it. I mean, think of all the things that Patrick Swayze did, and, and, and he's playing a drag queen like that's range. <laughs> I mean, yeah, no, it's just it, you know, but again, it's just how you vibe. Like, I don't get the feeling like I did when I see Roadhouse, like the trailers or anything like that. <laughs> um. You know, that's why nowadays with more action films, um, I'm appreciating more of the, the foreign stuff, the Asian stuff, like, you know, mm -hmm. the raid and stuff like that, because it just it just comes out across more genuine. I feel like we really in America hit our peak in the 90s with the action stars and think about who we had as our action mm -hmm. stars. We had Arnie. We had Jean-Claude Van Damme. We had Steven Seagal. Um, well, even now, Keanu Reeves with John Wick, like that's one of the better action and he's series. not even known as an action star i mean he kind of started it with the matrix but think about how many well, he started with point break but though. think about how many rom with yeah with patrick Swayze mm -hmm. and uh, how yeah. many how many rom-coms like has that even that movie got rebooted and it was people just said it was horrible mm -hmm. i never watched i it wouldn't i wouldn't watch it yeah i um i think you see like keanu and again all the rom-coms that he did all the uh you know, dramatic roles that he did, but he really turned out to be an excellent, um, Bill and Ted's excellent adventure, but like he, he turned out to be a really excellent, uh, action star. Yeah. And I think when you're trying to get a movie like Roadhouse, like back on the big screen, I appreciate it because it was an awesome movie, but I, I would have rather you just, this looks like an okay movie. Just don't call it Roadhouse. Call it like Rumble in the Keys or something, you know. Or you could have just went full nine and said Roadhouse too, and just made it its own thing, like you know, just outside. Like it could be part of the series, mm -hmm. but have nothing to do with Patrick Swayze's Roadhouse. It could just be its own. That's thing. what they did with Dirty Dancing Havana Nights. Like right. there was Dirty Dancing from the eighties, but then I think it was late nineties, early two thousands. They came out with Dirty Dancing Havana Nights, and it was taking place like right during the Cuban Revolution, and Patrick Swayze even had a cameo as a dance instructor in the movie, but it had nothing to do with the original 
you know, dirty dancing. You could have done that with this. It could have been like Roadhouse Key West, you know, like Roadhouse hyphen Key West or that would have been, but they're calling him Dalton. They're kind of like trying to squeeze in the same story, make him the same type of guy. Don't. Yeah, it's not just it could. There are tons. I mean, they're of, changing up some things, but I just it just it comes across like they're just not interested. They really don't seem interested in the in the whole thing. I do have to say, Jake Gyllenhaal did get buff. That was I could not picture his when he you know they had him in like the UFC. I'm like. Wow, Jake. Yeah. Good for you. <laughs> but I I honestly think, you know, if they called it Roadhouse Key Key West, there's tons of roadhouses across the United States. It's a, there's not only one roadhouse. You could kind of I mean, technically, I would have really loved to see Dave Batista in this role. <laughs> he's a good actor. I think I he's think very he underrated. Been great. Yeah, and he, he fits the role and it would have been funny. Like he's got good comedic chops. And it's it's kind of like, yeah subtle sarcastic comedy and yeah. that oh, man this is a bummer fuck this movie <laughs> well anyway uh, for the rest of you uh i am still going to get my godzilla rankings out at some point um i do want to get some more uh trailer out there but i have to go through and see what's out there right now i think there's something called uh what the fuck was it a uh, monkey paw or something but i have to check in on it and stuff like that but either way uh let us know your thoughts on this are you interested in seeing this are you a fan of the original uh so just give us your thoughts on it and we'll see you here next time on the metal time radio podcast and drinks beer the